Welcome to the Expert Series, brought to you by the Lupus Foundation of America. Our speaker today is Leticia Ocaña. Leticia is a bilingual, bicultural health professional and is experienced in implementing health education and prevention programs in the areas of breast cancer, tuberculosis, and diabetes self-management. She is one of our health educators here at the Lupus Foundation of America. Leticia holds a master's degree in public health. Today, she will be speaking about Lupus 101. I would like to turn it over to Leticia and thank her for joining us. Thank you for the introduction. It is my absolute pleasure and honor to be presenting for the expert series. As one of the health educators for the Lupus Foundation of America, I have the privilege of talking to people who are newly diagnosed with lupus. Many of them express a wide range of emotions, including fear of what the future may bring, grief over being diagnosed with a chronic disease, disbelief over the accuracy of the diagnosis, and even relief that they finally have an explanation for the variety of symptoms they experienced over the years. If you were recently diagnosed with lupus, perhaps you're having some of these same emotions and are asking yourself, now what? We've put together a list of five things to do now that you're newly diagnosed with lupus. We hope that you will find these recommendations useful as you learn to understand and manage your lupus. The first thing you can do is learn as much as you can about lupus. If you know little about the disease, it's important to read information about what it is and how it can impact your physical and emotional health. Because managing your lupus will be a team effort, you will also want to understand how to manage the disease, what are the possible triggers for lupus flare, and what treatments are available to help keep your lupus under control. The Lupus Foundation of America's resources can help you get started. You can learn about lupus by going on to lupus.org and visiting the National Resource Center for Lupus, which contains collections on various topics, including understanding and diagnosing and treating lupus. You may also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and sign up for our newsletter. If you prefer to speak with someone, the team of health educators are available to answer your questions. As you will discover, lupus is an unpredictable disease that affects everyone differently. In time, you will become an expert on how lupus affects you and how to identify triggers for lupus flare or when a flare may be imminent. We encourage you to work closely with your providers, ask questions, and stay engaged in your care. The second thing to do now that you're newly diagnosed is see a rheumatologist. A rheumatologist is a physician who specializes in diseases of joints and muscles and treat lupus. Your rheumatologist will be your first go-to person for all things lupus. Be sure to ask him or her questions about your medication, such as how will this medication help me? Ask about possible side effects, both common and unusual. Ask when he or she should be called about any side effects you may experience and ask how long it will take for the medication to work. We welcome you to download a list of recommended questions to ask your physician from the National Research Center for Lupus. We encourage you to work with your rheumatologist to help you prepare for a flare. For example, if you think you're having a flare, will he or she want to see you immediately? Be sure to ask your rheumatologist. Download the foundation's lupus flare plan and fill it out with your doctor. We also invite you to listen to the expert series presentation on management and prevention of a lupus flare. And because lupus can affect any part of the body, it may be necessary for you to see other specialists, such as a cardiologist for any issues with your heart, a nephrologist for any complications with your kidneys, and a dermatologist if you have skin complications from lupus. Your rheumatologist may be able to give you the referrals you need. He or she, as well as other specialists, will make up your healthcare team and it will be important for them to be in communication with one of another. If you do not have access to a rheumatologist, work closely with your healthcare provider, asking questions, developing a flare plan, and asking for referrals as needed. The third thing we'd recommend you do now is keep track of your symptoms and how they affect you. How often you see your rheumatologist or other healthcare providers will depend on your symptoms. Since it may be several months between medical appointments, writing your symptoms down is a good idea. You can use a symptom tracking tool to help you remember the symptoms you had between appointments. You can download a symptom tracking tool from the National Resource Center for Lupus. You can also keep a journal of how your symptoms affect your quality of life. For example, 
if you experience debilitating pain and it's affecting your relationships and emotional well-being, make a note of it to remember to discuss it with your doctor during your next visit. A journal is also a good place where you can write down questions you may have for your healthcare providers. If you have a smartphone, you may even keep notes on there. Our fourth recommendation is to practice a healthy lifestyle and avoid triggers for a lupus flare. While there is no lupus diet in general, people with lupus should try to eat a nutritious, well-balanced, and varied diet that contains fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, and moderate amounts of meat, poultry, and fish. We invite you to listen to the expert series presentation on diet and lupus, which is also available on the National Resource Center for Lupus. There are many physical and mental health benefits to engaging in physical activity. Therefore, getting enough physical activity whenever possible is also recommended. Check with your doctor to see what activities may be suitable for you. Getting plenty of rest is also important. So balance physical activity with rest. Smoking can complicate and accelerate the ill effects of lupus. So if you smoke, we recommend you quit. Please visit the National Resource Center for Lupus for strategies to help you quit smoking. Because stress and sunlight may trigger a lupus flare, we recommend people practice stress management and some protective measures. Recommendations for sun safety are also available on the National Resource Center for Lupus. Because people with lupus have an increased risk for infections, we recommend practicing good hygiene, avoiding people with colds or flu, and talking to your healthcare provider about which vaccines you should get. Finally, if you are newly diagnosed with lupus and you do not have a social support system, we recommend you work on building one. Having that social support system can be of great benefit to your overall well-being. There are many different sources of social support. The Lupus Foundation of America has chapters throughout the country. Get connected with one. The chapters offer support groups which provide you the opportunity to talk with others that are also living with the disease. Visit the Foundation's website to find out if there is a chapter and a support group near you. If there isn't a lupus support group near you, or if you prefer to communicate with people online and on your own time, Lupus Connect is an online community for people living with lupus. Lupus Connect was launched by the Foundation last year, and there are over 6,000 members on there now, sharing experiences, finding emotional support, and discussing practical insights for coping with the daily challenges of the disease. Family, friends, and coworkers, neighbors, and the faith community can also make part of your support system. These are the people you may turn to for help, for example, during a flare. You may also need someone to listen to you non-judgmentally or to help you with a particular task. Be specific about the type of help you need. Visit the National Resource Center for Lupus to learn more about creating and strengthening your social support network. I hope you find these recommendations helpful, and I thank you for your time. Thank you so much for joining us today, Leticia. We really appreciate all the information you shared about the five things to do after you've been diagnosed with lupus. For those listening in, we invite you to check out next month's presentation on lupus nephritis. If you would like to learn more about living well with lupus, you can find additional resources on the National Resource Center for Lupus, or you can call one of our health educators at 1-800-558-0121. Or if you would like to connect with others who are impacted by lupus, check out our online community, Lupus Connect, where you can talk with others, find emotional support, and discuss practical insights for coping with the daily challenges of lupus. Thank you and have a wonderful day.